Welcome to the introductory course on the Grade Approach and Summary of Findings tables. This course has been prepared and narrated by Holger Schunemann and Nancy Santeso at McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada. This course is part of a series of training modules that include an introduction to Grade and Summary of Findings tables, how to grade the evidence, including the individual factors, um, risk of bias, also called limitations in study design and execution, inconsistency, indirectness, imprecision, publication bias, and other factors that determine the quality of a body of evidence. The course also includes modules on choosing outcomes and how to use the Grade Profiler software, also called Grade Pro. This particular module is about the risk of bias or limitations in study design and execution. The factors that determine the quality of evidence are listed on that slide. They determine the four categories of a body of evidence. The quality of a body of evidence is categorized into 4 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus, 1 plus, or high, moderate, low, and very low quality evidence. We begin with the relation between grade and the risk of bias or limitations in study design and execution. Limitations in study design and execution or risk of bias may produce misleading or biased results. So how does the risk of bias affect the quality of evidence? There are many issues in the design and conduct of a study that can lead to bias. The risk of bias tool in Cochrane systematic reviews is similar to assessing the limitations in study design and execution in the grade approach. In principle, have to do with basic study design criteria. In randomized controlled trials, they can relate to sequence generation, the allocation of concealment, blinding and masking, whether the intention to treat analysis has been applied appropriately, whether there is loss to follow up, and then at the end of a study, whether there is blinding and masking of those assessing the outcome and those perhaps who perform the analysis and write an article. Related to the end of study is also selective reporting. Furthermore, there are other quality criteria, such as when trials are stopped early for benefit and when there are crossover designs that require special attention. The risk of bias or limitations in study design and execution is evaluated per study and across studies. It is done by outcome. GRADE considers the risk of bias per outcome across studies. It is important to note that the risk of bias or limitations in study design and execution may differ for each outcome, and it is assessed within and across outcomes. The quality of a body of evidence for an outcome will be downgraded depending on the seriousness of the risk of bias. The risk of bias can be either high, uncertain, or low. In grade, these Judgments are called limitations in study design or risk of bias is not serious, serious, or very serious. Depending on the seriousness of the risk of bias, downgrading takes place by one or two levels. Let's look at an example. This is an example from a Cochrane systematic review that deals with patients with chronic asthma who have been receiving salmeterol compared to no salmeterol and the outcome of interest were adverse effects. The investigators identified approximately 30 randomized controlled trials that should have obtained data on adverse effects related to this particular medication. What you see here is a typical risk of bias table for these 30 trials. The investigators in the systematic review looked at whether the investigators of the single studies 
performed allocation concealment, whether there was appropriate blinding, and whether the study was free of selective outcome reporting. That is, whether adverse effects were really reported when they should have been measured. The graph shows that approximately 50% of the studies were not free of selective outcome reporting. That is, these studies should have obtained data on adverse outcomes, but they did not report it in their study publications. There are two ways of showing this. One is a typical risk of bias table with the yellow, green, and red dots, where the green dots mean that this criterion was fulfilled. The yellow dots indicate that it is unclear, and the red dots mean it is not done. Another way of graphically showing these results is the graph demonstrates in how many studies this criterion was fulfilled and it is expressed as, an, as a proportion. What this slide also demonstrates is that across these 30 studies, an overall judgment is required. As all studies fulfilled the inclusion criteria for this particular systematic review, they all need to be judged in regards to the risk of bias. Now, would you downgrade for the risk of bias if 50% of the studies did not report on adverse outcomes that are certainly critical for making decisions about this particular medication? The judgment that needs to be made is whether there is no serious limitations or whether these studies are at low risk of bias, whether there are serious limitations or whether there are very serious limitations or whether there is a high risk of bias. Most people would agree that there are serious limitations and that selective outcome, outcome reporting here may lead to systematic deviation from the truth or bias. These limitations are likely to reduce the confidence in the effect and may lead to downgrading by one level. A footnote in the summary of findings tables would indicate that selective reporting is likely and that downgrading was done for that reason. It may also indicate that allocation concealment was uncertain in the majority of the evaluated randomized control trials. Let's go to another example from a, from a different systematic review. This is a systematic review that looks at patients with cancer. The intervention is parenteral anticoagulation compared with no anticoagulation, and the outcome here is major bleeding. This is based on a series of systematic reviews. In this review, several outcomes are addressed. One of them is major bleeding. As you can see here in that review, published in 2008, five randomized controlled trials were included. The investigators were concerned about selective outcome reporting in all five of these studies. In fact, only three out of five studies reported on major bleeding at all. Under those circumstances, would you downgrade for the risk of bias? Most people would agree that selective outcome reporting here is of concern and would downgrade the quality of evidence by one level. So that the limitations are likely to reduce the confidence in the effect and downgrade by one level for an elevated risk of bias. Now let's consider the same systematic review looking at the outcome mortality. The next slide shows a forest plot with the outcome across the five studies for mortality at 12 months. The next slide shows the risk of bias table for mortality at 12 months with, in patients who have received anticoagulation. As you can see, in three out of five studies, Adequate sequence generation was unclear, but four out of five reported on allocation concealment. All studies were blinded, and in one study there was concern about loss to follow-up. Now, would you downgrade for the risk of bias in these studies? It is important to note that all bodies of evidence or evidence assessment across studies will likely indicate some risk of bias. 
so that for this particular example, the overall picture may be that the limitations are not serious enough and that there would be no downgrading for the risk of bias. So how does one move from the risk of bias to limitations in design and execution in GRADE? To summarize it differently, if there's a low risk of bias, and most information is from studies at low risk of bias, then the interpretation is that plausible bias is unlikely to seriously alter the results. The considerations are that there are no apparent limitations, and in GRADE there would be no serious limitations and no downgrading. If the risk of bias is unclear, and most information is from studies at lower unclear risk of bias, then it is possible that plausible bias um, may raise some doubt about the results. If the potential limitations are unlikely to lower the confidence in the estimate of effect, then an overall judgment of no serious limitations is made and one would not downgrade the quality. If there are, the potential limitations are likely to lower the confidence in the estimate of effect, then a judgment and description of serious limitations is given and downgrading by two levels takes place. Finally, if there is a high risk of bias and the proportion of information from studies at high risk of bias is sufficient to affect the interpretation of results, then the plausible biases may seriously weaken the confidence in the results. If there is crucial limitation for one criterion or some limitations for multiple criteria, then they may be sufficient to lower the confidence in the estimate of effect and it would be labeled as a serious limitation with downgrading by one level. If there are crucial limitations for one or more criteria sufficient to substantially lower the confidence in the estimate of effect, it may be labeled as very serious limitations and downgrading by two levels would take place. For more information, please see the Cochrane Handbook, Chapters 8 and 12, the Help section or the Handbook of the Great Profiler that can be easily accessed through the Great Profiler software. And if you have any questions, please contact support at gradepro.org.